Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem from the daily challenge or whatever it's called. Uh, we don't usually do that, but maximum length of a concatenated string with unique characters. We're given an array of strings and a string S, uh, aka a concatenation in this case, is defined as basically a subsequence of this array. So uh, let's just take an example of this array down here. A subsequence is basically just choosing a subset of the strings. For example, we choose this one and this one, but we don't include the middle one. Then uh, the string S is just going to be a concatenation of these strings, uh, maintaining the order of them, right? So UN and UE. That's kind of what a subsequence is in this case, but order doesn't really matter in this case at all. But the thing that does matter in this is the concatenation of these, uh, you know, taking this example, UE and UN, it cannot contain duplicate characters. It has to be unique characters. And in this example, that's not the case, right? We have a U character in both of the substring so if we can concatenate them together we'll have two of these characters so that you know, that doesn't qualify as a valid concatenation and so basically what we want to do is find a concatenation from this list such that the length of that string s is maximized if you know anything about subsequences, in this case, uh, the brute force is, you know, for each subsequence or for each uh, substring in this case, we can either choose it or not choose it. So we have two choices for each of these, right? We can choose it or not choose it, choose it or not choose it, choose it or not choose it, all right? Two times two times two for however long this array happens to be. In other words, let's say n is the length of the array, then the time complexity is gonna be two to the power of n, so it's a very brute force approach if we want to actually get every single, you know, possible string S. Uh, and actually, that's how many string S's there are. To actually build it is going to be however long each of these strings is, right? The average length, maybe it's M or something like that. So even though this isn't super efficient, this is about as good as we can do for this problem. So I guess the solution is actually pretty simple, but implementing it might not be simple. Uh, the main approach I'm going to be taking is backtracking recursively, but there's actually multiple ways you can do this. You can sort of use, you know, a bit mask to kind of come up with every single subsequence from this. If you were going to use like a bit mask or just bits in general, you know, the, the main idea here is, you know, suppose in this case we have three strings, right? Let's say X, Y, Z, and we want every possible subsequence from them. Well, a way, a possible way to do that is just iterate through integer values g going all the way from one, or you could even start at zero all the way to two to the power of n, where in this case, n is three because that's the length of our array here. We would iterate from zero to eight and the reason is, if I just draw it out, it'll be pretty simple. So if we start at zero, right? Zero is basically choosing not to include this string, not this string, and not this string. Or we could do one, which is this, right? We don't include these two strings, but we include this one. Or we could do uh, two, right? Zero, one, zero, include this one, but not include either of these. And we'd go all the way until we got to the integer value eight, uh, which I think is... Uh, this, and actually this isn't eight, this is seven, but seven is the last one in this case where we do include each of these three substrings, right? So if you do that, you'll obviously, you won't have the binary representation necessarily. You'll have the integer, right? From zero to one to all the way to seven in this case. And if you actually wanted to build each of those subsequences, right? The concatenation of the strings, you'd have to go through this integer which in this case is one and just go and basically get each bit from it. And if the bit is zero, you don't concatenate this portion of the string. If it's a one in this case, you do concatenate that. So that's one solution, but I usually try to avoid bit manipulation and stuff like that if I can avoid it. So I prefer the recursive backtracking solution. The logic is pretty much exactly the same. We're still gonna enumerate every single possibility, but the uh, backtracking, uh, you know, the visualization is slightly different because we have kind of a decision tree that I'll be uh, going over. Remember how I said for each of these strings on the left, we can choose to include it or not include it. That's basically what we're going to do as a decision tree, right? So we include the first string, un, or we don't include it, which leaves us as an empty string, right? So then the next string, iq, we, ch we include it, right? Uh, if we include it, then we'll get un, iq. 
And if we don't include it, we'll remain as UN. Here, if we choose to include IQ, we'll just have IQ because in this case, we didn't have any, we didn't actually include the UN string, right? So we just have IQ or we cannot include IQ. If we do, if we add one more level to this, I won't draw it just to keep it short, but if we add one more level, including this last string UE, uh, it'll basically give us all possible combinations uh, that we can have. And then we're gonna look at each of these strings and then make sure that they have unique characters, right? In this case, all of them have unique characters. So we're gonna return the length of the longest one. In this case, the length is four. Uh, and that happens to also be the solution in this case on the left if you read the description of this. So this is the longest, the length of it is four, and that's what we can return. So without further ado, now let's jump into the code. So to save time, I already wrote out the entire code, but if you've been following our channel at all, you know that we've solved a lot of backtracking problems. We have a backtracking playlist, and I usually solve them the exact same way because backtracking problems are very similar, and this problem is no different. We've solved many problems just like this one, so let me walk you through the logic. So I like to have nested functions. You can see I have a function down here called backtrack. I put it inside this function because then we don't have to pass in every single parameter. So you can see out here I have a char set, a hash set basically of the, you know, this is to make sure that we can ensure that we have unique characters, right? That's what this set is for. And we don't actually have to pass that set in every function call because this function is defined inside of the outer function. So with recursive functions in general, we know that there's always going to be a base case. Of course, the base case in this problem is if we, you know, have gone through the entire array. Basically, if our index is now out of bounds, then we can return. What are we going to return though? What value are we going to return? We've created some subsequence, right? Some concatenation and we reach the end of the array. So we want to return, okay, of our concatenation so far, how long is it? right? And there's many ways you can return that length. The easiest way, the way we're doing this is just by taking the length of that uh, hash set, right? Because this hash set will tell us that all the characters so far are unique. And by taking the length, we're just telling, we're just saying, okay, this is how many characters we have so far in the concatenation, right? And that's what we care about. So that's what we're returning as the base case. If we are don't reach the base case, then we still have some decisions to make, right? We have two decisions, right? One decision is that we include the substring at index i, right? You can see that's what this first if statement is about. But this if statement looks complicated, but it's not. So we can make a choice of including this string at index i, but we can only include this string at index i if it doesn't have any duplicate characters of the characters we have so far. This char set out here, defined out here, tell, tells us what characters we have so far in our concatenation. So I also wrote a helper function basically that will tell us, okay, our current character set that we have so far and the new characters that we want to introduce, do they overlap? And when I say overlap, I mean, are there duplicate characters between them? If there are duplicate characters, then this if statement is going to evaluate false and we're not going to execute this statement because then we, of course, we're not going to want to choose to include this a string. But if these are not overlapping, then we are going to choose to add this substring to the concatenation. And you can see that's exactly what I'm doing. This uh, for loop here is just going through every character in this array and adding it to the character set. Once they have been added, then we are running our backtracking function saying, okay, we already made the decision at index i, now let's continue backtracking starting from index i plus one. And then we're storing the result of that, which will tell us, okay, what's the longest concatenation we were able to create. That'll be stored in this variable, which was defined out here. And then we're basically doing our cleanup from the backtracking, right? We added all of these characters. Now we want to remove them because we don't want these characters to be included when we make our next decision, which is on the following line. But this logic is important. And, and I basically brushed over this overlap function. I defined it as a helper function just to keep things uh, organized, but you can do it however you choose. You can see I kind of have a Pythonic way that I did it, but I also have the commented out basically, you know, the more manual way of writing it out. If you prefer that, you know, we could do it either way, depending on what the interviewer would want and whatever you're comfortable with. But the logic of this overlap function is important because there is an edge case associated with it. We want to count 
the occurrences of each character that we've already have before adding this uh, string s because we want to know does this string s and the char set overlap so we want to make sure every character included between these two is unique and how i'm doing that is just saying that the count of each character cannot be greater than one if it's greater than one we return true indicating that they overlap if it's not greater than one that means they don't overlap but one thing you also have to make sure to remember is the string s itself here could even have a duplicate, right? Like maybe our char set so far is empty, right? It doesn't have any characters included yet, but the string S does not overlap with the char set, right? It has maybe two B characters, right? This means that S is not overlapping with our character set, but the string S itself has duplicates, right? It has two occurrences of B. So therefore, if we add it to our concatenation, then it will not have unique characters. So this will evaluate to saying yes, that they overlap. That's one edge case that I actually missed when I was coding this problem uh, this morning. So that's explaining the overlap function. And getting back to backtracking, remember we had two choices. I went over the first choice where we do include the string at index i of our array. The next choice is if we do not include it. And it, you know, calling that is the exact same. We're just calling backtrack at index i plus one, just like we did at this line. The only difference is when we call this function, our char set will not have any of the characters from the string at index i, right? because we did that cleanup before we call this function. But once we call this function, we wanna take the max of it and the max of our result so far, right? Which could be zero or it could be some number from this line of code if the if statement does execute. And we wanna take the max of that and then return that. And that is the entire code. Of course, we have to call our backtracking function starting at index zero, the beginning of the array, and then just return the result of that. And by the way, you can see this code for yourself using the link in the description if you want to do that. And so I'll run this just to make sure that it works. So it runs quicker if we actually comment uh, this and then we use this portion. So I'm going to do it like that, but it works in both cases. I, I guess it's about if you want short code or if you want more performant code, but it works in both cases. Let's just run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yeah, it's pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like, and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon if you would like to further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.